In a world where reality is overrated, three David Attenboroughs walk into a bar. Imagine the absurdity, ladies and gentlemen, as we dive into a paradox of epic proportions. Here we have three versions of the same man, each one a master of narration. The first, a young and eager Attenborough, still clutching his first fossil, eyes alight with the passion for nature that would define his career. The second, a seasoned veteran of the BBC, his voice as familiar as the cooing of a morning dove, narrating the life of the first. The third, a slightly older, slightly wiser Attenborough, sipping a pint and narrating the second Attenborough's narration of the first. This is no ordinary tale, my friends. This is a story that dances on the line between reality and fiction, a story that tumbles headfirst into the realm of the absurd. It's a tale that takes the iconic style of David Attenborough and multiplies it by three, creating a symphony of Attenboroughs, each one more absurdly delightful than the last. From his early love for nature, a love that led him to collect fossils and natural specimens, to his illustrious career at the BBC, each Attenborough has a story to tell. And who better to tell these stories than David Attenborough himself, and himself, and himself, as the echoes of their voices intermingle, a cacophony of nature facts and British charm, we're reminded of the man behind the voice. The man who has dedicated his life to enlightening us about the complexities and wonders of the natural world. The man who has become synonymous with the BBC's nature programming. The man who is, quite simply, a national treasure. And as the third Attenborough finishes his pint, he looks into the mirror and sees another David Attenborough. Like a Russian nesting doll of natural historians, the Davids multiply. The scene unfolds in the heart of a dense, verdant jungle where the echoes of our first David's narration are still bouncing off the towering trees. Suddenly, there is a rustle, a movement in the undergrowth, and out steps another David, a carbon copy of the first, his voice a sonorous symphony of nature's wonders. The two Davids stare at each other, a mirror image of fascination and bewilderment. Well, isn't this a remarkable specimen? The second David murmurs, his eyes wide with amazement. He circles the first David, inspecting him like a newly discovered species, his voice narrating each detail with precision and a hint of humour. The first David, meanwhile, is not to be outdone. He too begins to describe the second David, his voice a rich tapestry of sounds, weaving a narrative that is both amusing and oddly thrilling. The jungle is filled with the harmonious symphony of two Attenboroughs, each one trying to outnarrate the other. The comedy of the situation is not lost on them and they chuckle, their laughter echoing through the wilderness. But wait, what's this? Another rustling in the bushes and out steps a third David, just as fascinated and bewildered as the first two. This David is different though, his voice is a touch more husky, his demeanour a bit more serious. He steps into the fray, his narration adding a third layer to the already complex symphony of voices. He describes the first two Davids his voice a blend of humour and parody, his narration style eerily similar to that of Attenborough himself. The three Davids, each a perfect copy of the other, stand amidst the towering trees, their voices a chorus of nature's wonders. The jungle is alive with the sound of Attenborough, each David trying to outdo the other, their voices rising and falling in a rhythm that is both chaotic and beautiful. As the night grows long, the Davids begin to argue about who has the best Attenborough impression. In the wild, it's survival of the fittest. In this bar, it's survival of the Attenborough Est. A hush falls over the room as the three Davids square off, each trying to out Attenborough the others. David one, with his iconic khaki suit and blue shirt, leans on the bar, a slight smirk playing on his lips. He starts with a classic line. Here we see the lesser spotted David in his natural habitat, the BBC studio. David, too, in his signature whisper, retorts, Ah, but it's the rare migratory David that truly captures the imagination. Broadcasting from the deepest jungles to the highest peaks, always in search of the next great story. His reference to Attenborough's globe-trotting career draws appreciative chuckles from the crowd. Not to be outdone, David III, sporting a well-worn globe in one hand, roars, But let's not forget about the David who uses his voice to advocate for this precious planet of ours. He gives the globe an affectionate pat, a clear nod to Attenborough's passionate environmental activism. The room erupts in laughter as each David tries to outdo the others, 
their impersonations becoming increasingly dramatic and exaggerated. There's David One mimicking Attenborough's calm, measured narration of a lion hunting its prey, while David Two mimics Attenborough's awestruck whisper as he describes discovering a new species. Then there's David Three, passionately arguing for the importance of renewable energy, his words punctuated by emphatic gestures with his trusty globe. In the midst of the laughter and good-natured ribbing, the Davids never lose sight of the man they're impersonating. Through their humor and camaraderie, they pay tribute to a man who has dedicated his life to educating the world about the wonders of nature and the importance of preserving it. As the debate rages on, an unexpected guest enters the bar, another David Attenborough. Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the bar. Picture this, another David Attenborough strolls in, the door swinging shut behind him with a squeak that sounds suspiciously like a macaw. The shock, the horror. This isn't just any David Attenborough. Oh no, this one's more Attenborough than the last. His voice has a depth that makes the Mariana Trench look shallow. His British accent is so quintessentially British, it makes fish and chips seem American. Just as the bar patrons start to recover, yet another David saunters in, the very epitome of British charm and sophistication. This David is so Attenborough, he's practically a walking, talking nature documentary. He's so Attenborough, in fact, that a troop of chimps in the corner start grooming each other, compelled by his commanding presence. But wait, there's more. Another David, another Attenborough. This one's so Attenborough, he makes the others look like imposters. His voice is so husky, it could pull a sled through the Alaskan wilderness. His British accent is so refined, it makes the Queen's English sound like Cockney slang. Suddenly, the bar is no longer a bar. It's a jungle, a desert, an ocean. It's a swirling vortex of nature, of life, of David Attenborough's. There's no escape. The walls close in. The floor drops away. The patrons are swept up in the tidal wave of Attenborough's, each one vying for the chance to narrate the scene. The barkeep, a grizzled old man who's seen it all, throws up his hands. I'm out, he says, vanishing into a puff of smoke that smells suspiciously like Earl Grey tea and crumpets. In a shocking twist, the bar is now a nature documentary narrated by an army of Davids. When life gives you David Attenborough's, make a nature documentary. And thus, dear viewers, we find ourselves at the absurd conclusion of our tale, in a world teeming with Davids, each one narrating the other with such fervor and enthusiasm that it's a veritable cacophony of Attenborough's. Picture, if you will, a nature documentary narrated not by one, but by an army of David Attenborough's, each one trying to outnarrate the other. In this bizarre universe, the Davids, in their zeal to document every minute detail of their fellow Attenboroughs, begin to narrate each other out of existence. It's a strange phenomenon, like a paradoxical wildlife documentary, where the subjects of the film are also the filmmakers. One by one, the Davids begin to fade, their voices becoming fainter, their images less distinct, until they are nothing more than echoes of the original. It's as if the very act of narration has caused them to self-narrate into oblivion. It's a surreal spectacle, a testament to the power of words and the strange, absurd world we've found ourselves in. But amidst this chaos, one David remains. The original David Attenborough, the man who started it all. He stands alone, unnarrated, untouched by the bizarre events of this tale. He watches as his duplicates disappear, a bemused smile playing on his lips. Perhaps he's relieved, perhaps he's bemused, or perhaps he's just glad he doesn't have to share his name with an army of duplicates anymore. As the last echo of Attenborough narration fades, silence descends. It's a strange, unfamiliar quiet, as if the world is holding its breath, waiting for the next narration. But it doesn't come. The Davids are gone. All that remains is the original David Attenborough, standing alone in a world that's just a little bit quieter, a little bit less absurd. And so, the life and demise of David Attenborough ends not with a bang, but with a narration.